presents. Good afternoon, Professor May, Mrs. Chen, Dr. Lee, Principal Lee of Queen's College, students and honorable guests. Welcome to this open lecture on challenge with curiosity, Joseph Nizam and his intellectual heritage, jointly organized by EDP and the East Asian History of Science Foundation Hong Kong. Now let us start with a question. What are the four great inventions of China? Students, the four great inventions of China. And we all know that paper, printing, the magnetic compass, and gunpowder powder were Chinese in origin. These inventions indicate that China was, once upon a time, hundreds of years more advanced in her discoveries than the rest of the world. Unfortunately, during the 19th century, China suffered repeated defeats by invading foreign powers. This reveals that she was no match to the southern nations in her military hardware, which directly reflects the country's development in science and technologies. The next logical a hidden question is, why didn't the Industrial Revolution happen in China? This is the famous Needham Hustle. Dr. Joseph Needham was the greatest British sinologist and historian in the 20th century. Now, as the father of chemical and biology in his earlier career, he became associated with three young students from China doing PhD work in biochemistry at Cambridge University in the early 1930s. These three postgraduates challenged Dr. Needham's knowledge of China's historic achievements in science and technology, and inspired him to explore the tremendous achievements of ancient China. Professor May will provide us with an extremely interesting story of Dr. Needham's scientific life, his conversion to the in-depth study of Chinese civilization, and writing of over 35 volumes of world-renowned classic science and civilization in China, and explore together the Nidam puzzle. And Dr. Peter Lee of East Asian History of Science Foundation Hong Kong will introduce Professor May to us in a few minutes' time. Before Professor May's lecture, may we now invite Mrs. Trevi Chair, the Permanent Secretary for Education, to give us the opening remarks. Mrs. Chair, please. The Master of Ceremony has very capably uh, summarize what I intended to say. So I will just make two remarks. First is a very warm welcome to Professor May, Professor Bray, and also a big thank you to friends and supporters of the East Asian History of Science Foundation Hong Kong, especially Professor Lee. Because without your support uh, and your proposal, we would not be having here today. And also I'd like to uh, sort of explain a little bit about sort of um, the very small audience. Uh, uh, who may be a, a disappointment to the organizer, and I must say, we as well, a disappointment to us as well. Uh, but this is Hong Kong, because schools are very conscientious in organizing extracurricular activities for children, for school's children after school. So normally, they would have activities in school up until 6, 6.30. So next time, maybe we try to do it on a weekend, and the, and the turnout rate should be much, much better. And what the AMC has said, actually um, I would make an investigation into Joseph Needham's study as current today as it was years ago, decades ago. Because it's all about how we apply knowledge, how we integrate knowledge, how we make it scalable. Um, culture, organization, and I must say, a reflective application and consideration of relevance of academic research to everyday life are perhaps parts, perhaps parts of the answer. And I look forward to hearing Professor May's uh, lecture. And uh, will we perhaps now give a warm welcome to Professor Lee, who will introduce Professor May for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Jade. I'm not a professor, I'm just a PhD. <laughs> you really gave me a lot of pleasure to introduce my friend, uh, Professor May. 
I have known Professor May since the early 1990s. His specialty has been in the uh, meteorological archaeology, particularly in the area of northwestern part of China. As you know, we all heard about uh, Old Silk Road uh, around the Han Dynasty and all those periods when uh, Chinese trader moved to the Middle East through Asia, minor through all this area and developed a very booming trade. But in the meantime, the Chinese civilization, technology, and all the chemical aspect of it have been very prospering uh, even before the Han Dynasty. And Professor May has been a very sturdy student in this area of pathological archaeology. Because when we look at the museum today, we see all the finds, the bronze, all kinds of uh, artifacts. But it took someone like Professor May's interest to dig deeper and deeper. And for this, he went on to Cambridge University and got his PhD in um, methodological archaeology. After he received his PhD, he went on to a few other countries to work on the uh, continuation of uh, methodological archaeology, including Japan, I believe. Eventually, eventually, destiny prevails. He was appointed director of the Needham Research Institute. He is the fourth director. The founding director, of course, was Joseph Needham. And the second one was Professor Ho Ping Yuk, who was actually very involved with Hong Kong University for some years. And uh, he passed away actually very recently. And we, of course, feel very saddened by his passing. And uh, so uh, Professor May, background in methodological archaeology, and also his interest to continue what Joseph Needham question. You know, why did science and technology suddenly come to a stop around the end of the Ming Dynasty? And so where do we go from here? Today he is going to challenge us to talk about the curiosity and also the challenge. So may I now introduce Professor May uh, to take over the podium. Thanks so much uh, for the very kind introduction. Um, I'm sitting here, I'm, I feel really nervous for, for today's lecture because I just talked to, uh, come to speak this, oh, no, dear, sorry, the, chair, the chairman. And, um, and I said, um, I prepared this lecture almost for one month or two months, I, I don't know. And I just don't know how to prepare this lecture. You know, it's uh, my good friend John Moffat gave me a very good idea. He said that because you're talking to the secondary school students, I think you just focus on the curiosity of Joseph Needham. And he gave me very good guidance. And I did that. And I said, uh, the major reason for me is why did Joseph Needham come to do this research? 